Today, I have a graphics card with unlimited VRAM. So we're gonna see how much of it we can use. Hop into our first game, and that is kind of a light title. It is Fortnite. Starting it off easy to get you guys warmed up. We're only using about four and a half gigabytes or allocating about 7.3 gigabytes of VRAM at 1440p high settings because we can do better, all right? We need to use as much of this VRAM as possible. This game's able to crank it, probably more than you would think. It's allocating 10 and a half gigabytes of VRAM and using almost eight 1440p native epic quality settings. Now, obviously, this isn't realistic settings for how you'd play Fortnite. Fortnite is using the Unreal Engine 5, which a lot of games in the future are also going to be using. So this gives you sort of an idea of at least the effect that Nanite and Lumen is going to have on games in the future. Also, in general, VRAM might not matter for the future PC gaming at all. And we'll talk about why that might be later in this video. But let's move into our next game, and that is Cyberpunk, because we can do a little bit better than Fortnite, right, guys? Starting off easy, you know, just the ultra settings rasterized at 1440p native. So no ray tracing in these settings, but we're allocating still nine gigabytes of VRAM and using about six and a half. Um, it's definitely nothing to ignore, but you would be fine on an eight gigabyte graphics card and not have any issues whatsoever. Let's crank this up with some ray tracing on the ultra preset. You're quickly gonna notice while the frame rate drops, the VRAM usage goes up. Allocated VRAM, 12 and a half gigabytes, nearing 10 gigabytes on the use. So if you're on an eight gigabyte graphics card, you're definitely going to be hitting problems at these settings, ray tracing ultra 1440p native. 10 gigabyte cards might not be free from problems either because you need at least a little bit of a buffer with how much RAM you can use. So you realistically, on a 10 gigabyte graphics card to run well, you're probably looking at more about nine gigabytes used in game. So it's important to take that into account when you're looking at these results. However, we all know that cyberpunk is very demanding and who's really maxing out cyberpunk anyways. So let's move on to our next game that maybe a few more of you guys have enjoyed. And that is The Last of Us Part One. And again, starting off easy, 1440p native, low settings so low settings are still allocating that doesn't mean it's using it 12 and a half gigabytes of vram yeah this isn't the most optimized game in the world it's only actually using six of that but despite that i have enjoyed my time a lot with last of us part one and the game does look beautiful however same story again we can use more vram in these games let's up the settings to high maybe a higher quality visual fidelity that a lot more people would want to play on at the high settings 1440p native is asking for allocating 14 gigabytes of vram it says it's only using about 7.3 gigabytes here but i have seen this go as high as nine which means that eight gigabyte cards obviously can't do that and honestly you're getting scared about having a 10 gigabyte graphics card in this game that's starting to leave your only option at a 12 gigabyte graphics card as a minimum to feel decently comfortable playing this game but if games are already pushing this much vram in 2023 what does that look for the future now it's possible that they don't really push past 12 gigabytes of vram because that's what basically what the ps5 and the xbox series are able to use because why optimize for pc you know you can just buy better hardware on pc so probably the biggest offender in PC gaming at this current moment. And that is Resident Evil 4. I know everybody knows about this game. Allocating 16 gigabytes at its peak and using over 11. 12 gigabyte graphics cards aren't even safe in this game. Just, wow. Like if you're asking me, that's ridiculous. There are two ways you can deal with this VRAM problem on PC as a gamer and have to take it to ourselves to deal with this problem. In Last of Us, I did a little bit of experimenting and I wanted to test at different settings for textures. At what point could I see a major difference in the visual fidelity? And from what I saw, you got a significant reduction in VRAM going to medium settings and it wasn't that much worse but there's also one other workaround when it comes down to this you can also sharpen your footage last of us part one does have a way to do this built in you can take fsr the upscaler and then sharpen it after so 
One, you're using FSR, which renders the game at a lower resolution, which uses less VRAM to start with. And you lower your texture settings and then sharpen them after. If you show the, me these side by side, the FSR footage that's sharpened compared to the native textures on higher ultra, there isn't that much of a difference or at least not that much of a difference that I'd be throwing a fit, okay? Obviously, the native textures at their highest resolution is going to look the best. I think a lot of people would be impressed running just a little sharpening in their games. That's why all the graphics card makers, Nvidia, AMD, and Intel, all have some sort of sharpening filter baked, baked into their driver software. But this only seems to work in full screen games and maybe on only certain versions of DirectX. However, this is in no way any excuse for the graphics card makers and the game designers or the devs to not be optimizing for VRAM. Like, don't get me started with new graphics card releases. Like, oh my God, dude. We're getting mainstream eight gigabyte graphics cards back in 2016 and to me, that's way too long to see no change in VRAM capacity. And this also applies to the devs, because if I'm being honest, games that came out years and years ago that were far less demanding, especially with VRAM, don't look markably that much worse than games that are coming out right now. So the improvements are kind of minuscule, but the demands for this visual fidelity is increasing kind of exponentially out of our control. And that's one of the main things as PC gamers buying components and stuff like that. We don't want to have to worry about VRAM for one. We want to know that its performance can meet its VRAM capacity. And then the second solution to this problem, and something I alluded to earlier in this video, also in general, VRAM might not matter for the future of PC gaming at all. You could just not play these games. Like say the games that are coming out that are going to be using Unreal Engine 5 and most likely requiring a lot of VRAM. Like name an upcoming game that you're genuinely excited for when it releases. And the only one I can really think of is maybe Starfield. We've seen a lot of bad games recently, and most of the good ones we've seen are literally remakes or remasters of past games. Last of Us Part 1 on PC actually just put out another patch that has this huge list of fixed changes. How, how long is this, like a month or two after release now? It's been quite a while to have this many changes and bug fixes on a game that was already released on PS5 years before this. Again, even though I have enjoyed my time with Last of Us, it is kind of embarrassing them still having to fix all these things. I mean, at least they're doing it though. I'll give them that. And Cyberpunk is releasing a big update soon and they adjusted their system requirements so that they're even higher now. So a game that already not that many people are playing and hasn't really been a fan favorite, kind of a flop. They're continuing to add graphics updates and technology to make even less people be able to play it in ideal conditions. Why? I don't know what's going through the heads of the gaming market right now. If you're anything like me and maybe the general public on PC, you could realistically just not play the new games and not have to worry about these VRAM settings in the first place. If you don't have a 12 gigabyte graphics card, it's not that you can't tinker with settings to get things to work. It's more that you have to think about it and you have to worry about not having enough VRAM. You have to check yourself. And honestly, 12 gigabytes is kind of pushing it in a lot of games coming out right now. And again, as I said earlier, what is that gonna look like in a few years? Is that gonna get even worse? You know, are these new games coming out even worth playing why would you upgrade your computer to play these games danny z did a great video on this if you want to check that out i'll link it right here i did find out how much vram you need it's about 12 gigabytes but i could easily see 12 gigabytes not being enough in a few years and that's why when intel released their art graphics cards them offering 16 gigabytes at 340 dollars was like oh that's uh incredible you guys actually care about vram while you know, Nvidia does not give a crap. And then AMD is just kind of doing their own thing. And not gonna lie, being able to turn up settings and not having to worry about VRAM being an issue in games is how I wish everybody was with PC gaming. Let me know your thoughts with this and maybe we can check back on this topic when there's actually good games releasing. Bye.